recognize the uh, congressman f who represents Palo Alto, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Swalwell, five minutes. Great. And, and Chair, thanks for holding this hearing. It was so important. Absolutely. And uh, I think we're at our best as a, a committee uh, when we're taking on issues like this. And I've enjoyed working with the gentleman from uh, Long Island, Mr. Garbarino, on the Cyber Committee. I think we're doing a lot of good work there. Uh, Mr. Laparouk, I was hoping to talk to you a little bit about something uh, that Californians uh, are very concerned about and creatives everywhere. Uh, you know, the entertainment industry is uh, the second largest jobs engine in California. And it's not just folks who are on screen, it's, it's folks who are uh, writers, uh, editors, uh, a part of the production teams off screen. And AI certainly, it, it's the future. There's, there's no ignoring it, there's no putting it back in the bottle. Uh, it's, it's the future, and, and so we have to embrace it, we have to shape it, put guardrails on it and contours around it. But when it comes to the creative community, you know, the example over the weekend of uh, what happened to Scarlett Johansson uh, with her voice essentially being stolen from her uh, for an AI product, what should we be thinking about to make sure that we protect uh, artists and creators uh, from this, but still, as I said, embrace uh, AI and, and recognize that this is where we're going? Um, well, I, I think it's going to be important that we find ways to sort of try to be proactive in anticipating what people's rights are going to need to be. I mean, a situation like that, um, I mean, yeah, probably not something that was even imagined or contemplated when the movie where she played in AI, I think it was four or five years ago, yeah. came out. And this is something that's come up a lot, I think, in the, the recent, um, the writer's strike, the actor's strike, is how do we build in those protections now, not just for how AI is being used right now in this industry, but also how's it gonna be used in five years? How's it gonna be used in 10 years? So, um, you know, looking at workers' rights is a little outside of my field, but um, from just, the technology standpoint, it moves so fast. I think it's important to be proactive in thinking about not just current risks and factors to care about, but what do we what do we need to care about down the line that we might not be ready for when right. it comes up. And when you talk to creatives, they're they're not opposed to AI, and that, that's such a, a basic hot take, which is oh, they they oppose AI. They they don't oppose AI. They they just want rights, and they want uh, you know, and they're willing to engage around their likeness and their voices, uh, but they should be compensated. And the majority of people who are writers and actors are, are people you've never heard of, uh, but this is their livelihood. And in California, we're especially sensitive to that. I wanted to ask Mr. Amlani, because uh, you're, uh, we're in the same backyard in the Bay Area, and the chairman alluded you know, that, that our tech culture uh, has created you know, so many uh, opportunities in the Bay Area. But I do worry about with AI, uh, and I have a, a community in my district called Pleasanton. It's one of the wealthiest communities in America, and, and you've heard of it. I have other places in my district, uh, like San Lorenzo uh, and Hayward and Union City, and they have some of the uh, poorest communities uh, in the country uh, with schools that don't have enough resources. And those kids have dreams as big as kids in Pleasanton. And so I just fear that at you know, a, a child's earliest uh, days in schools that there's gonna be two classes created. Those who uh, are given access to AI in their classrooms and, and those who are not. And so what can the private sector do, because you're often really some of the best solutions out there uh, to partner uh, with uh, school districts to make sure that uh, you're imparting your knowledge and skills on places that need it but most, recognizing that you're gonna have a, a need to recruit talent down the track as well. Um, sure, thank you so much for the comments and questions. Um, Congressman, I, obviously this is a pretty personal issue with me, but I think um, with regards to actually allowing people to have uh, access to the technology and AI in particular, um, it's interesting the way that AI is actually democratizing itself and it's making itself available to everybody. Um, it's, it's as much of a concern to make sure that actually everyone uh, has access to it and, and is actually able to, to have these tools, but also um, people that have gone through large universities and master's degrees and PhDs, uh, now a lot of that content and, and knowledge is available at people's fingertips who have never gone through any of those programs. 
And so, um, you know, with, with different AI tools that are now available at people's fingertips, you can now code, you can now write apps, you can now create content. You, you know, I've got my 12-year-old creating music right now. Um, this type of democratization of the, of the AI capabilities is both an opportunity, uh, but also a massive threat. It, it really does upskill um, many cyber criminals around the globe to be able to attack uh, systems, uh, people that are not um, as well off potentially and would love to have uh, the ability to be able to create malware that could potentially create a ransom payment. And so those types of opportunities to be able to educate the youth and make sure that they know how to use it responsibly and for the right um, aspects are something that I think our society needs to embrace uh, and do a lot more of. Great. Thanks. Thanks again, Chairman. Gentleman Yields, uh, I now recognize Mr.